Ah, draft science video presentation. Uh, Ken Wheeler video probably, um, but we'll start with the comments. Not too much to deal with, so should be almost <laughs> almost uh, uh, instantaneous. Uh, you can't just call someone dishonest without immediately supporting that claim. Sure you can. Um, the key is, is when somebody, say you make a claim about somebody and they say, no, I didn't, or that's not true, or that's a lie. You know, first you need somebody to say what you're saying isn't true. So, um, that's sort of important. Um, and it's not dishonest of me to claim that he's, um, supporting his own videos with fake popularity because it was demonstrated in the past. So I'm just saying the evidence is in the previous videos that showed he had videos that had like say 25 views and 20 likes. Now nobody on the internet has popularity like that. If you're lucky you can maintain 1 in 10 you know views to thumb ups. If you're lucky. I mean that's the incredibly popular people do that. Um, so it's clear that he did it. I've made the accusation in the pre in the past, and he hasn't denied it. And he hasn't denied it because he knows that's exactly what he's done. So there's you know there's no argument here. Um, and so what's your your problem? I mean until he denies it, then you can't say I've made a false claim, can you really? And the evidence is kind of undeniable. And frankly, I wasn't the first person to make the claim. I wasn't the first person to notice it. So, um, fuck you. Alright, obviously you don't get what the physics definition of energy is. I, I mean, is there a physics definition of energy? I mean, should we go to Wikipedia and find that one? Or uh, Google it? Um, because it is a little bit subtle. Um, it really just has to, I would argue, in, with imbalances and forces and when there's an imbalance there's still going to be plenty of force but there's an imbalance that's when we call it energy because we see it so you have the complexity of having energy in the form of being potential energy or kinetic energy and I would argue uh, that uh, much of the potential energy we can't even see <laughs> so um, the arguments just kind of I mean, you're just being an asshole. But this is the cowboy. Uh, Feather Kuzman, I guess that's Heather Fartsman or something. I don't know. He's making fun of somebody else's name, as he always has to do, because he can't create an identity for himself. Uh, so, uh, what do you expect from the Kent Hovens of physics? So, again, I couldn't be separating myself from religion more than I have. And my whole argument is basically that, no, it's you people with your whoop de doo uh, wavicles and wave theory that have destroyed physics in the sense that you're clinging to this archaic, stupid notion that everything had to be made of something. I mean, it goes all the way back to Aristotle. So you're the clueless ones trying to, you know, um, bronze the past and f stifle... Um, progress and so Feather says um, Ken Hove at least has a coherent explanation no he doesn't what do you mean he has a coherent explanation um, I mean it doesn't make any sense he didn't even know bananas were not clones that runs counter to evolution in that he believes God created the world in six days and the fossils in the ground are presumably to test one's faith. Well, they don't even use that argument, right? They just try to deny their existence. And clearly, if it was a test, God would probably say something about how I'm testing you. He doesn't do that. Uh, anyway, Gary just has, well, the twans. Twans, right? Um, so I can just, every time he says that, I'll say the wave of calls or, um, uh, the, the wave functionites, you know, some kind of, and, and that's going to be how you argue on the internet. Yeah, I think it's just so fucking childish. Uh, see, they tip tap and it's the free electrons that done it. 
uh, as I pointed out, electrons technically really can't be very free because they're charged. And finding an environment in which in every single direction there is exactly an even force for an electron that is a everywhere looks like exactly the same amount of plus and minus charge would theoretically be impossible pretty much so free electron is horseshit uh, as an idea it's just more bad vocabulary endorsed and sanctioned and promoted by these fucking idiots so um, go fuck yourself cowboy and uh, fuck you to the other asshole uh, I mean, really, you can't make any arguments, right? You can't make a physics argument. You're all too coward to do a live room, including the cowboy cunt. Um, come on, show up, and let's see who brings a rational argument and who doesn't. Because there you have to answer my questions. You won't be able to keep evading them. Um, and you know it. So you're all too coward to do a live room. You don't know anybody who's got the balls to do a live room. You don't. You can't think of anybody. You can't come up with anything. Nothing. Zero. All right. I'll take on all comers, any comer, so to speak. I'll pay somebody who actually has a degree. So if they have a degree and can demonstrate they know their shit, um, I'll pay them for their time. I mean, I'm not going to pay Joe nobody a lot, but I'll pay him. Okay. And I will pay somebody who is somebody real money. Um, so so. Um, you're just such cowards and you don't uh, again why don't you show how the theory can't work the magnetism videos in the subject video uh, uh, subject playlist are right there go ahead and tell me show me draw a picture of it how that theory of magnetism can't work demonstrate it and then you can ridicule it but you haven't demonstrated anything you're just such fucking harassing, um, trolling cowards. You got nothing, um, including no balls. All right, <clears throat> speaking of which, all right, Ken Wheeler made two videos that are just so wacky. Real metaphysics versus fools that subvert and distort, and uh, where he's basically defending the existence of the soul Okay, and arguing that the Buddhist philosophy doesn't say there's no soul, and again, just basically defending some sort of religious concept, right? I mean, as somebody just brought up evolution, I mean, if you believe in evolution, there's really no room for the soul, right? I mean, it just wouldn't make any sense. Um, so, there's nothing different about our brains than all the other mammal brains, and they evolve from much lower organisms and there's just no room for soul creation it's just a nonsense idea can't fit into a rational model all right then in this one he's basically defending ufos uh, as if um, it's sort of proof of alien technology is the fact that they have the right shape spaceships <laughs> it's just such a silly argument um, but it's reason for me to bring up the more important subject, uh, which is just, you know, in, in looking at the forces that exist, gravity and magnetism and charge. Those are the ones that stick out, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> you know, the fact that it's all the same speed, this force moves at the same speed, and that it functions in terms of this degrading over distance by... Um, uh, similar mechanism, whether it's uh, R, R squared, or R cubed in the case of dipole magnets. And that that sort of makes sense if you understand it to be a radial force, um, that it's a real thing that's happening, that is the, the pressure is real, that pushes things apart, and the pressure that pushes things together is real, in the sense that there's a difference in the pressure, and that's what we call energy, is when there's something and on one side there's less pressure than there is on the other side it will appear to have energy now it didn't have the energy it was pushed by the consequence of a pressure differential and so in a sense you could say the definition of energy is a pressure differential but it's just that obvious and the force has to come from somewhere stuff doesn't just move 
It doesn't just obey nothing. Nothing doesn't tell something where to go or how to behave. <laughs> It's just this stupid notion. So you have, and you should be able to get this, right? I mean, you have this, the attraction of magnets is similar to what you would call gravitation. You can make magnets spin into each other. You can do things. So, I mean, it, it, is a, it has a very similar quality. And the same thing for charge, especially between the uneven charges. It looks a lot like gravity. Um, and so you know these two forces have to be the same thing. You can't say that one is bent space, which is just a weird, idiotic bent geometry, and that the other one is some kind of fields. Uh, it's whatever they are, it's got to be the same thing. Um, you know, with just the subtle difference that allows you to create this different thing called repulsion. Um, you know that you don't have in gravity and that's just a consequence of charge because you have two things that have opposite characters so one of them is attractive and one of them is repulsive and gravity is just the absence of the repulsive function um, just because you're not segregating the forces and so they're going to mix and neutralize the bias that would be created by emphasizing one over the other in terms of more positive or more negative um, because they don't <coughs> segregate the force and it's mixed um, you know the force is neutralized in terms of having a character but clearly the absorption of the force is still going to happen and it's the absorption that creates the gravity that means that if something absorbs energy that was going to hit you, like I say, somebody shoots a bullet from behind me and the bullet hits me and it doesn't hit you, um, and you were expecting it, <laughs> okay, you needed it to stay balanced because you have bullets hitting you in the back, and now one of them's not going to, the balancing bullet's not going to hit you in the front because I blocked it, I absorbed it, I moved, and that's what gravity's doing. So even though it's doing it by accelerating charges, which is electricity, so to speak, um, accelerating uh, electrons and protons, moving them. Um, it's not moving them in any disproportional way. That is, it's not moving them by an excess of a negative force or an excess of a positive force. But it is moving them still in one direction, and that's gravity. Well, anyway, so it's just that it really is this mechanical system is so simple and it works so well and why are you people clinging to a system that just you should know it can't be the right answer bent space and virtual photons can't be the right answer there's got to be something common between those forces because the fact is they they have too many characteristics in common especially their speed of movement through space. It's just a huge giveaway and you're just a nihilist to pretend <laughs> you know you don't have to uh, account for that. So anyway, we'll play this funny video. Since I'm a guru of retroduction, okay, which is a one of the ancient law secrets. Of so another one of these nonsense. He just he keeps using this word. So what does it mean? You know, reduce things to their simplest form, maybe, um, or uh, attempt to go backwards uh, to see. But I mean, it's nothing more than deduction based on the, the evidence you have, and that's all deduction is is a combination of imagining what the consequences would be and then imagining what the causes would be but you don't need a special word for it but the Pythagoreans and the Platonists for making uh, discoveries which are not directly objectively um, observable uh, so they made discoveries you can't observe and what were those oh the the soul you know what <laughs> what what discoveries it's just mush. It's actually a little bit deeper than that. And uh, deeper how? Yeah. 
heavily an expert on field theory. Yes, well, you obviously don't understand the concept of energy. So, um, and uh, again, expert in what way? He has, he has, there's no rational fields in his geometry. That is, there's no mechanism that causes the hyperboroids or the troiroids or any of the movement that goes on. Somehow these are magic particles that some just know how to do this automatically. And so fields of what can still be stated? Because there's no mechanism. There's no, he, he provides n no insight into how the little bits of his field energy know how to know they're supposed to do this you know instead of just doing a straight line how do they know they're supposed to curve and hook and change my book on magnetism is incredibly popular uh, more just silly words right incredibly popular <laughs> relative to what <laughs> you know my book I mean, it's just a silly statement. Uh, incredibly popular. It, if it was on TV, it'd be the lowest rated show on TV. I'm probably one of the few people that, like, loves reading on field. You may get a conjecture, and uh, it's not what we conjecture. It'll be perfectly logical. It'll be perfectly based and rooted. So, again, he, and he hasn't said anything about what a f his field theory is. Again, there's no explanation for any of it nothing there's no explanation for why the fields that he say exist why they're causing this bent motion the infirmly retroduction by the way if you don't know what the right hand rule is you should look it up hilarious because i don't think he has a clue what causes it so he says go look it up what would be the point of looking up a rule okay that physicists don't have an explanation for it. and they don't have any explanation okay they just have it it's right hand rule so they're just basically telling you that well when you have a positive charge and a negative charge and you have them oriented in a certain direction the charge they will induce and the magnetism they will induce will be north south instead of south north um, but they don't have a theory of why now I've explained why is because the the actual um, what charge is doing is actually creating dipole magnets, okay, but they're all facing out, you know, one end, north, south, north, south. So there is no other side to the field, and so all you're getting is the on off part. And it always starts, uh, you know, with a north. And so the point would be is that it always starts, um, you know, and there's always an uh, odd number. So there's always one more magnet showing of north or south than there is, you know, doing 180 degrees. So it's not an equal field, and so that's why there's a right-hand rule. It's because the um, arrangement of the atoms it always has a bias um, that's whatever the first one was. You probably didn't get any education in high school or college about uh, field theory, but look, just type in right-hand rule, okay? It's actually about understanding the nature of the field. So when I say right-hand rule, you're going to have to educate yourself. And right, it won't tell you anything. So again, and it's, he could explain it. He could say what it is. Why is he telling people to do this? If it's so fundamental and so important. And where did the Platonists come up with it? Why didn't he show us where they wrote something about a right-hand rule. Why is this relevant? The right-hand rule is. So if I were to make a conclusion based upon countless observations, and we're talking about unidentified flying objects here, and I'm not giving my support one way or, one way or the other. So he doesn't have an opinion on the veracity of uh, claims of extraterrestrial visitation. And he should be able to say, oh yeah, it's bullshit. I mean, people see gremlins, people see sasquatches, people see all kinds of crap, but we know we have no hard evidence, any really hard evidence, indicating any such thing has ever taken place. What's that? But if we were to make logical, retroductive conclusions about the nature of photographs, whether they be real or fake, I assume at least 30 percent of them have to be real. Like, let's all right. Why bother talking about what percentage are real? Real what? real ambiguous mush. So again, there's no real photograph that establishes, that has any, uh, that can survive any scrutiny. 
So you don't have a real photograph that's of a quality that can survive scrutiny. All you have is a, oh, that was a thing that moved across the sky. That's all you have. Let's, let's make 30% of them, right? Of course, UFO, simply means unidentified. There's a lot of stuff that's unidentified, but we're going to make uh, conclusions based upon what I know about field theory, which is a lot, and to connect. By your own claim, and that's it. Um, and again, what's to know? Uh, the conventional theories on what these fields are is nothing, so knowing what they know is nothing. I mean, there is no field theory for conventional physics. They, they're clueless. They just give it a name and give it some properties, but they don't know well, how it does what it does, and that's why they have to say something like a virtual photon because they can't account for the existence of it. ...that and apply retroduction. So what I know about field theory and the observations of these saucer-shaped craft... Um, you so, and again, the saucer shape, we any idiot can figure out why they're saucer-shaped, right? It's because human beings for at least, say, four or five hundred years have understood drag. Okay, <laughs> that you're not going to be able to move as fast. You know, you block the wind. They, they know what a sail is. And they didn't shape their sail like a flying saucer because the sail wouldn't catch any wind if it was saucer shaped. So they're just doing the opposite. They're saying, how can I make my sail as thin as possible? You know, cause as less drag as possible. Oh yeah, if I make it saucer shaped. And if I want it to go in any direction. It needs to be saucer shaped. That is, it needs to have the same profile in all directions. So obviously, the saucer shape frisbee. You know, that's why flying saucers are saucer shaped. Now, physicists know that yeah, you don't need that to get from one place to another. You only need that in atmospheres where there's drag. In real space, even in space that has some dirt in it. The saucer is not going to do you any good because the particles you hit at a high speed, your sh your windshield doesn't work anymore. You know, to, to, ha to have a sloped profile doesn't help you when the particle's moving fast enough. So if a bullet's got a high enough velocity, it goes, you know, it doesn't bounce off windshields. It doesn't do any of that crap. And your sloped surface won't stop fast particulates. So in deep space, it really doesn't matter what shape you are. It's just not going to help you any, <laughs> you know, um, because the um, you're not going to be able to deflect particles with your shape. You're not going to be able to deflect the drag, whatever drag there is, and there's so little that it doesn't add up to much. This retroduction and make a hyperlogical statement and conclusion. So hyperlogical, like we need that kind of rhetoric. Hyper correct, hyper right, <laughs> you know, hyper accurate. <laughs> it's just silly. Okay, perfectly in line with the right hand rule about the nature. Of the so again, in line with the right hand rule, how does flying saucer have anything to do with the right hand rule? It's just you know, no obvious connection. The geometry of these craft. Since, but first we actually have to make a statement before engaging in a retroduction. And that is the fact that what people call magnetic attraction, which absolutely does not exist because magnetism denotates... So again, it's just silly not to say it doesn't exist. And he says the same for magnetic repulsion. So, I mean, we understand the concept does exist. It does happen. Magnets um, go together and magnets repel. And those words are rationally called attracting and repelling. When you have velocity towards each other, that's called attraction. And um, he just wants to pretend that if I ban using the word attraction, then we have to use some other word. Well, yeah, then you have to just ex explicitly talk about why things move, and why they move is because they're accelerated. Yeah, we all know that. Italy is force in motion in a centrifugal, not... Force in motion, force in motion, force in motion, force and motion. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, when forces act, things move. Yeah. Centripetal and inertia and acceleration. What people call Yeah, centripetal crap, all this stuff. Well, how does something know to be centripetal? Uh, I mean, this, the basic rule is something keeps doing what it's doing unless a force acts on it. So if something's going to go in a circular path, some force has to act on it. What's your force, Ken? 
called magnetic attraction, and what he, stupid human beings, and humans are intellectually unevolved as it pertains to field theory, at least 99.999% of them are. Unevolved. I mean, why bring up evolution in a conversation about a philosophical or scientific concept? It's about information. Now, clearly, we don't have a great deal of hard data to go on. So, um, assertions have to be made based on a lot of um, circumstantial evidence, uh, much like the original evolution argument before DNA and blood typing and all, all kinds of stuff. You had to make a circumstantial evidence argument. You just had to show a volume of, of circumstances that could only be explained rationally by natural selection. And what we call gravity is one and the same thing. The only nuance is that one is point source and the other one is incoherent. So again, this point source thing doesn't say anything unless you're more explicit about what you're talking about. And point source means usually that it's an infinitesimally small point and it radiates in spherically in all directions from that point. Now, um, he's going to assert I don't know what he's going to say. I think he's going to get it backwards, actually. Mutual mass acceleration, i.e. gravity. It's the same difference between a 5-watt light bulb and a 5-watt laser. So what the hell is it? So, again, this is one of his most inane arguments, um, claiming there's a difference between a 5-watt light bulb and a 5-watt laser. Now, clearly, uh, you can have higher and less loss, like incandescent bulbs versus tungsten versus... Um, uh, the H word, whatever the hell it was. Um, <laughs> why, why, why can't I remember these things? So I, it's just such an obvious word, right? It's just um, halogen. Um, they all have different um, ratios of how much watts they're consumed for photons you get out. Um, so, um, you know, the efficiency um, can vary. But the very idea that obviously we know that light bulb spreads light in all directions and a laser takes all of that energy, the entire five watts, instead of spreading it all over the place, it concentrates it in one spot. And there's, it makes perfect logical sense to say that, yes, a five watt light bulb that's spreading the light in mm, 270 degrees is going to appear much weaker than a beam of light that's focused in one degree. The difference between a 5 watt light bulb and a 5 watt laser. Both are 5 watts, right? They're both uh, uh, field perturbations, specifically uh, EMR, electromagnetic radiation. So what's the distinction? You know, a 5 watt light bulb is useless to read a book by, and a 5 watt light bulb, a 5 watt laser, excuse me, will burn a hole in your ass, right? Uh, right, but yeah. The, the, I, I, it's just perfectly understandable that yes, you're not shooting the light in, you know, 270 times squared, right? I mean, to do the spherical, both d dimensions, <laughs> you know, spherically in both dimensions, it's a huge number of times um, more concentrated. So there's the same number of photons. It's just that they're all in one degree with the laser beam, and they're in a whole bunch of degrees with the light bulb. Duh. Okay, so the distinction in differentiation is that one is a point source, and the other one is incoherent. So he's um, claiming the laser is point source, which again just breaks the whole concept of point source being point source, and then it radiates in both dimensions from that point are in all three dimensions if the point has no background. It's not part of something. Um, and incoherent doesn't really say anything because you have to talk about coherency in terms of phase, lots of different things that can be coherent. So that's not a fundamental property, that's a, a property as an, that's an adjective kind of property. So, the actual, by the way, the only difference between uh, gravity and so-called magnetic attraction, which is not magnetism based at all, is actually... So, the only difference between magnetism, the attractive part, and gravity, the attractive part, he's going to claim the only difference is... Uh, dielectric is that to be... Dielectric. There's no such thing as dielectricity. 
there's clearly no dielectric involved in the magnet or in the earth or in the sun there you know <laughs> what are you talking about the magnet the mutual acceleration between the two masses is coherent uh, so they're mutually accelerating in a coherent manner which again doesn't say anything and um, I'm sure there's um, gravity uh, that's where one object is heavier than the other and there's no perfect coherency in terms of which one's moving more, which one's accelerating more. The point source is multiplicative. This so again, point source is multiplicative, yes, but it's not a laser beam. Point source is mul multiplicative in that it's, it can radiate in any one of the dimensions. This is why a 5 watt laser is infinitely more dangerous than a 5 watt light bulb, which is infinitely... I mean, these arguments are just so stupid, right? I mean, it's just a hose, a water jet made very, very fine is far more dangerous than one spread out. I mean, any idiot can know that. Not dangerous. Infinitely harmless. You can't even read a book by a 5 watt light bulb. A 5 watt laser will burn a, a hole in the book you're trying to read with a 5 watt light bulb. So, making the same... So, nothing fundamentally different except for the fact that the laser beam is a beam and the light bulb isn't. There is no other difference. Same number of photons. Now, obviously, to make lasers, you have to create laser light in a different manner, so laser light will be um, monochromatic. Um, I haven't seen too many white light lasers, so <laughs> if any. So... Um, just because of the way you um, cause the photons to be in a narrow beam, that that mechanism also segregates them to a specific frequency, uh, a range of frequencies. I meant that, and this is not my opinion, this is not reproduction, this is... This is horseshit. That's all this is. This is just absolute nonsense. An absolute fact is that what we call gravity, what we call so-called magnetic attraction, which is not based in magnetism at all, is one and the same thing. And of course, so they're one and the same thing, but they're clearly not the same thing in most respects. I mean, the same force is causing them in the sense that I would concede that yes, it's both a charge mechanism. But clearly, in the case of gravity, the reason why there's attraction is because of the very fact that there is an absorption of the energy. And yes, that's happening in magnetism, but it's because the, of the segregating effect of charge. That is, the repulsion between electrons, the repulsion between vote, uh, protons, and their inverse relationship of attraction. It's the conjugate geometry that makes up the entire universe. So some, what was this, conjugate geometry again. So, so again, there's nothing in this. This is just words, and you're just saying, well, what, how do I visualize conjugate geometry? What are you talking about? Can't you draw a picture of any of this horse shit? The conjugate geometry, a force in motion, inertia, and acceleration, respect. Whatever that is again, so force in motion, inertia, and acceleration, <laughs> caused by what? What pushes what? Effectively, one is an inverse image of the other. One is the torus, that is the geometry of force and motion. I so, again, the torus is the geometry of force and motion. And again, there's no explanation for whatever is torusing how it knows the torus. Magnetism. One is the hyperboloid, or an hourglass shape. The negative image of an hourglass shape, if you're to take the negative of that, is a torus. The negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid. These saucer-shaped vehicles, and I'm not making any bold statements about them, uh, explica uh, uh, demonstrably. Yeah, yeah, you are. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I don't think they, they're not similar to either one, a Taurus or a hyperboloid. Excuse me. These saucer-shaped craft have the geometry of a Taurus. It is an absolute fact that since gravity... So, whatever. I mean, obviously any idiot can draw, you know, curve line, curve line. And so you can have all kinds of curve line with a little bulb so you can look out. Another funny part of right of flying saucers is, is the idea that you would have this advanced uh, civilization and they wouldn't figure out how first to make probes like we're doing, sending to Mars. Um, and that even if you made a ship, you wouldn't bother with glass windows, uh, you know, because you're just asking for trouble. 
right? You wouldn't bother. Is mutual mass acceleration, i.e. incoherent... Cameras. It's cameras. You go with cameras. Dielectric acceleration, no different than magnetism, except one is incoherent, the other one is point source. And... All right, so now it's incoherent and point source. So somehow magnetism is point source, whatever that means, and uh, gravity is incoherent, not point source, whatever that would mean. Again, point source has to do with the source. So what is what's the difference in the source? How how is the force sourced different in gravity? If it's not point source, what kind of source is it? Fat involved source. It's the magnets. That these toroidal shape that you saucer shape. A saucer is nothing other than a flat torus. Okay. Obvi <laughs> yeah, obviously it's nothing more than. You know, a square is nothing more than, uh, you know, a flattened um, circle. The center part of the torus would be where potentially human or non-human occupants would be. The uh, toroid... So, so more crap about how people would occupy it. So everything's spinning and somehow they're not spinning because they're in the middle. The middle of what? Because, you know, this, the hyperburloid thing is supposed to have all this kind of motion, like a donut. <laughs> you know, so how would, the, how would the middle save you there because you're going to keep getting pushed out? Uh, so it doesn't make any sense. There's no, not even consistency in his own babble. ...geometry of the saucer-shaped craft must, in the only way, and since everything is electrical and everything obeys the right-hand rule, look up, I'm going to pause while you look up what the hell the right-hand rule is. Yeah, well, why don't you explain it? Why don't you give us your paraphrase of why there is such a rule? Why it turns out that that rule exists? Why, as a rule, does induction happen that way? Everything is... It's everything is electrical, but elect electricity is a hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism. Everything is... Uh, dielectricity, he said it. There is no such thing. Go look up dielectricity. It's not a real thing. Specifically, dielectricity and magnetism. The only way any vehicle in the universe could work as an anti-gravity. I hate the word uh, anti-gravity because... Well, right. There's no anti-gravity. There's gravity. Uh, there's absorbing force. There's absorbing bullets, right? So you want to you wanna create a device where... So you you're exist in the universe and bullets hit you from all directions in an equal number. Your balance pressure. When you're in gravity, the idea is is there's less bullets hitting you because the Earth's in the way or whatever. The Chinaman on the other side of the Earth is absorbing the bullets that were headed right for me, and he moved towards the Earth and ate, used them up, so they didn't get to me. Um, it's that simple. So anti-gravity really means you have to create something that absorbs bullets. <laughs> you know. Good luck with that. It's really nonsensical. Since we're actually talking about the right-hand rule, the only way... Uh, yes, yeah, so we're talking about the right-hand rule in some so ambiguous a way, so, so amorphous a way, so disconnected a way, so undetailed a way, so in such a way that you might as well just say we're talking about Alice in Wonderland or we're talking about um, French toast or we're talking about chocolate cream pie because you're so distant from this providing any evidence of a connection that there's no way anybody rational listening to you is going to know the connection because there isn't any you haven't detailed any connection what does the right hand rule have to do with gravity a magnetic slash dielectric or an electrical vehicle could work against mutual mass acceleration an electrical vehicle could work in absorbing bullets no, you can't do it any other way than the way we do it, which is you have to have a big pile of mass to absorb the momentum. And that's the only way you can do it. You have to have something absorb momentum. And then the thing that you absorb the momentum is going to squish you. That's just so your anti gravity device is going to be so heavy, it'll pancake you. Now, obviously, repelling gravity, right? Repelling acceleration. 
Because gravity is not a force, it's an accelerator. So again, obviously it has to be caused by something. So again, to say it's an acceleration, of course it's an acceleration. That's what Einstein said. It's an acceleration. That's what Newton said. Everybody agrees it's an acceleration. What you haven't answered is what causes the acceleration. Do the little bits, the atoms inside, and I would believe in electrons and protons. I don't know what he believes in. Do you think they accelerate just because they hear the word accelerate? Or what, what, what makes them move in a new direction? You're saying they're not getting acted on by any physical thing. So what causes them to change their direction? Magic? Yes, that's exactly what you're saying. Magic. There's no force involved, obviously. So the reason there's no force involved... Is so again, there always is a force involved. Every time there's anything moving, there's a force involved. Just a fact. It's all force. Electricity, light, gravity, magnetism. All force. All of it. Anything with momentum, force. Anything moving the speed of light, force. Gravity says it's dielectric. It's the same thing with magnet. It's a dielectric, meaning absolutely nothing. A dielectric is an insulator in electricity, and it, it just means that it's not a good conductor. It still can hold charge on its surfaces, but it doesn't conduct the 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 change through the material to the other side. So there's no communication directly between um, the atoms. It says when you actually take two magnets here and you like let go of them, they will mutually accelerate. Well, again, so they don't mutually accelerate. They accelerate proportional to how much energy the other guy blocked, how much mass moved. So the big thing moves a lot of mass. The little thing moves a little bit of mass. So when you move a little bit of mass, the big thing says, you're not going to move a big thing with that little bit of movement. But when the big thing moves, yeah, you're going to move the little thing easy because a big giant thing moved. You absorbed a lot of bullets. Right? If you take two incoherent masses like this book and this lens cap, they're not... I don't know why it jumped up louder all of a sudden. That's kind of weird. ...can accelerate. I mean, if you actually take two giant lead masses, you can actually see that they will deflect towards one another very, very slightly. But one... Uh, deflect towards each other. So it's just some language where... You know, it's kind of, you know, deflections are usually kind of like reflections. So, so deflections kind of imply moving away from each other, not towards each other. So deflecting into each other sounds kind of bizarre. Um, but again, what, what, why? Why do they move? You're saying because the electrons and the protons are the atoms just know they have to move in a new direction. Nothing has to force them to force. Again, we're talking about incoherent mutual mass acceleration. The only way, so... So again, more doesn't mean anything. Incoherent mutual mass acceleration. Doesn't, what is that saying? Voodoo, magic, uh, no physics involved. Nothing physical in this explanation. ...called anti-gravity can work is, wait for it, the right-hand rule. So again, uh, again, gravity has no component of polarity or bias. The right-hand rule only works because there's a bias of um, dipoles, north-south, 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 and so they're always arranged in that pattern, and the pattern has to be bisected, uh, you know, north at the north end or at the south end, depending on which way they're turned. <laughs> so if they're going left, it's at the south end. If it's going right, it's at the north end. That's where the separation between the magnets is. And the only way a right-hand rule can apply to a craft that is trying to keep its ass off the ground, right, is an omnidirectional toroidal magnetic field. An omnidirectional, so I, clearly it has to be in the one direction if you want to... Uh, go against opposed gravity that's one specific direction you have to go in um, so how do, again how does this nonsense explain anything you create a toroid and all of a sudden the earth doesn't absorb force no since we're talking about omnidirectional non-point source 
So non-point source, which again doesn't say anything because all the little bits inside that make something gravitational, that is its mass, all the little mass bits are point sources. Mutual mass acceleration. No, I did not give you fancy jargon when I said that. Uh, I mean, it, it's all jargon. There's absolutely, it's not fancy, but it's, there's just no explanation of anything, any physical explanation of why it goes from here to there. It just says it, it thered. It heared and then it thered. And you people are satisfied with that? Oh, yeah, that's physics. Uh, it, it here, there. Now we're done. I've explained it, right? Replay that part if you want to again. The only way okay, I will, to engage. It was, it was really stupid. The only way. Mutual mass acceleration. No, I did not give you fan. So mutual mass acceleration. So again, saying nothing. Again, saying nothing that any other rational person on Earth doesn't already agree with. That gravity, it, the function of gravity, the most the closest cause the most direct obvious cause is acceleration. Now the job of the physicist is to explain where the acceleration comes from. <laughs> Why does it accelerate? That's the question that's interesting. The fact that it accelerates is not interesting. Fancy jargon when I said that. Replay that part if you want to again. The only way to engage in the inverse of mutual mass acceleration is an the only way to, so if you want to get, evade the mutual mass acceleration, the order to move, you just toyroid, and somehow the moving things are now disengaged from their function. I've stopped them from doing whatever they were doing. I've taken away their mass somehow. Omnidirectional, toroidal, everything's the right hand rule. The only way you can actually levitate something off of the ground, or even accelerate off of the ground, is an off... So again, the only way you levitate things is with magnets. Okay, so when we use the common uh, understanding, you can drill holes into two magnets, you know, put them on a stick and balance them on top of each other, and they'll levitate. One magnet will levitate on the other magnet. Um, clearly... But we know, again, that's because the forces are segregated. And so as long as you keep the poles from flipping, as long as you keep the magnet from flipping, um, you can levitate them because you've isolated one element of the force, that is the repulsive part. Not surprising. But there's nothing, no component of that in gravity, obviously omnidirectional toroidal magnetic field. It can't be in one direction. It has to be omnidirectional force vector. And omnidirectional force vector. So again, saying absolutely nothing. And that would be point source, as pointed out. Point sources would radiate force in every direction. Omnidirectional. And also applying retroduction to this, the accelerometer of such a vehicle would work in uh, let me under, let me just restate just for clarity I'm not claiming that electrons shoot energy in all directions at once they're probabilistic and they'll shoot it in any one of all of the directions at any time so um, when you add up a bunch of them um, the net effect is energy going everywhere evenly by the inverse square law Increasing the power output as acceleration increases and decreasing the power as acceleration decreases. So an accelerometer would be linked to the output of the omnidirectional magnetic force vector. So you could, you could maybe even generate energy by um, opposing gravity. So by creating, by absorbing force, again, that's what you have to do. You have to absorb bullets. You have to stop the bullets from hitting the target. That's the only way to play gravity. And the only way to stop bullets is with mass. Can't do it with things that don't have mass. <laughs> so, yeah, can't be done any other way. You have to accelerate mass. Of said vehicle. The reason why these vehicles are saucer shaped, like I said, they're nothing other than flat toroids. Okay? Flat. I mean, you want to make an anti gravity device, you have to make a planet and put it. <laughs> you know, equidistant from the one that's bothering you. It's the only way to do it. You want anti-gravity? That's right. Make another Earth 
and put it put yourself the same distance from both of them and you'll have anti-gravity or voidals and the only reason they don't have a hole in the middle is because that hole in the middle is being occupied by persons or living creatures right where where was that where was that written in the book of ufo i mean i, I haven't seen that all these the fake little cigars and spaceships and flying saucers all had a rule that the people could only live in the middle <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't see that rule anywhere. The only way such a vehicle can work without, um, we're talking about, talking about explosion technology, which is current human technology, right? Explosion technology, yes, force. You have to, if you want to, if you want to overcome a force, you have to apply a f equal uh, opposite force. And the force of gravity, for all this talk about how it's a weak force, no, it's really strong when you think about just how much energy it would take for you to use photons to move something as much mass as gravity moves so easily. If you had to move it with photons, then you would realize, oh, it's more than five watts of, of laser. It's going to take me megawatts to move this with photons. Gravity's a very powerful force. Yes, right? We're talking about literal explosion technology instead of electrical, because everything's the right-hand rule, right? Everything is the right-hand rule. The only way to actually keep such a vehicle off the ground or accelerating into the ground is to have an omnidirectional force vector field. All right, omnidirectional force vector field that is anti-bullets. So, you know, theoretically, I suppose, that's his, you, you can make the argument that I could shoot a force at a force. I mean, I could shoot bullets at the bullets coming at me. But we know that the effect of shooting the bullet is, is that I have a recoil in the opposite <laughs> direction. So shooting bullets at bullets probably isn't going to do it when you're trying to do the anti-gravity thing. You can't shoot mass at the mass. Uh, I mean, without causing yourself to accelerate in exactly the wrong direction. That is working in opposition to the mutual mass acceleration of, say, the Earth and that vehicle, because everything is the right-hand rule. That so he said it again. So he said the right-hand rule, what, at least ten times now and hasn't tied it in any rational way to any of this mush. How does the right-hand rule ever apply to anything gravitational? There's no poles in gravity. Right-hand rule is a polar argument. Is the reason why these vehicles are saucer-shaped. Now you're going to say, well, not all of them are saucer-shaped. Very true. If pictures, 30% of the pictures, let's say 30% of the pictures are true. That's true. And again, he says the same thing. I haven't seen any of the pictures that are true, if what you mean is you can see what it is that's a picture of. So the stuff that might be real pictures are pictures of little blinky light thingy. There's no shape, there's no saucer, there's no any of that. So show me the true picture of a saucer. True. They wouldn't have to be saucer shaped. But they would actually have... So again, they would have to be saucer-shaped, which is again just implying that somehow the only way to navigate in an atmosphere is by doing anti-gravity, when clearly in an atmosphere you can just do what an airplane does. You can do what a helicopter does. You can do lots of things to maintain yourself in an atmosphere. Big wings, you know, lots of things. Um, you, you don't have to anti-gravity to, you know, coast around uh, in the atmosphere. So, more horse shit. And you certainly don't need it in space. To have that saucer toroidal field generator in some, I mean, it could be a square, square vehicle, but it would still have to have that same tor It could be square, but it does how can it possibly be square and then create, what, what do you call it before, coherent, and clearly it would not be, um, yeah, you lose all your coherency. Toroidal field generator inside of it. Whatever that means. So a toroidal field generator. A field of what? Generated how? That affects what? How? The only logical reason why most of these seem to be saucer shaped by using both inference and retroduction is that the inducement of the right-hand rule up so so what he's implying here is that if the aliens are smart they would have to use a, a, a flying saucer when no we don't even do that we send probes we do this this and the other thing so none of it 
fits in any real way. Um, that you would have a saucer shaped landing craft, even if it was going to be a landing craft. There's no such rules. That the inefficiency of the taper on a flying saucer, I mean, it's a huge space waster. I mean, that's why cars aren't saucer shaped. Everybody would love to have a car that was saucer shaped because you get great aerodynamics. And the reason why they're not shaped that way is because it's a waste of metal and weight. Of that toroidal omnidirectional force vector, i.e. magnetism, would not be induced in the actual vehicle itself, therefore the vehicle itself would be toroidal, such that the actual inducement of the field at the outer lip where it's generated would be into free, I hate using the word free space. So that doesn't mean, mean anything. We hate using a concept that whatever that means even, what's free space versus not free space? Uh, what, uh, ether versus unether, anti ether? <laughs> you know, it's just. And I, again, it's 299 likes to 26 dislikes for babble. Just fucking babble. Basically, defending that there's some reason to believe in UFOs because smart aliens would use flying saucers when we don't. I mean, for lack of a nuance, it would have to be in free space so that the field is not being induced in the actual vehicle itself. Um, but there's no way around this. Other than... Yeah, there's lots of ways to explain reality that don't have anything to do with this much. Explosion technology, i.e. So explosion technology, that is, you know, countering a force with an equal and opposite force rockets, so on and so forth, the only way a vehicle could keep itself above ground and accelerate away from ground, since of course the Earth and every other celestial body out there other than a neutron star is incoherent mutual mass acceleration. This is too massive. So, so again, more just magic. Just magically accelerate. You don't need any gas or oil or fuel or of any kind. You can just accelerate by will. You can actually look this up. Like, you take two giant lead balls and they let them free swing. They notice... Which you don't have. It's a deflection. They'll actually pull towards one another. And gravity. Gravity's not a force. It's an acceleration. I mean... So, again, just kind of silly. What we know it is is an acceleration. And the question is, you're saying accelerations can create, be created without forces. And the rational people say... No, you need a force to accelerate something. The only acceleration, which is not force, is dielectric. So again, dielectric what? How, do, how does an insulator have anything to do with this conversation? This is why, wait for it, there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Magnetic attraction is bullshit. The only reason why stupid human beings... He also says magnetic repulsion is bullshit. So again, the idea of things moving together and things moving apart, he won't allow us to use these rational words to describe the event. Why not? I've been calling magnets accelerating towards one another. Magnetic attraction is because thousands and thousands... And again, nobody's doing it for any other reason than it's sensible. So the physicists aren't denying that acceleration is causing things to move together and causing things to move apart. All Everybody agrees acceleration is the cause, the first cause. The question is what causes the acceleration? So again, this is so inane. He's pretended, this is such a straw man argument to pretend that all the physicists w wouldn't agree that Yes, it's acceleration that's causing what appears to be attraction. It's not attraction. It's clearly acceleration. There's no such thing as attraction. I mean, in the sense that you still have to blame it on something. Something moves the thing. Now, if you want to talk about an attraction in the romantic sense, then it's just a conceptual idea of desire or want. Um, but it doesn't make you physically move. There's a whole physics to physically moving. As of years, a stupid, intellectually unevolved, dumbass humans have been looking at lodestones, which are naturally occurring. You know, people have been playing with those for thousands. The Chinese, the Greeks, everyone's like, oh my god, they got these two lodestones. Rock, you know, rocks you find out. Coolest thing on earth. They probably thought it was magical for thousands and thousands of years. Oh my god. 
Yeah, and a lot of people still do, and clearly none of you people have any clue how this thing really works. You just don't understand polarity and charge at all, because you don't understand they're the same thing. Um, the magnetic monopoles are the electron and the proton. Give me a reason not to believe that. Give me one piece of evidence indicating that isn't the case. Show me how an electron does something other than exactly what a monopole would do. You let go of them and they accelerate towards one another. Well, eventually they knew that these were uh, magnetized objects. Well, this must be magnetic attraction. Human beings still call mutual mass acceleration of point source objects. Magnetic attraction. So let's again, let's just point out to, to evade his pathetic straw man, all the physicists agree that acceleration is the me the mechanism through which the attraction uh, takes place. So there is no argument here. This is just semantics. Nothing to do with magnetism. Of course, human beings don't understand what magnetism is. Magnetism is the dielectric field. So again, more dielectric field. What the fuck is a dielectric field? There's a dielectric, a substance that has properties, uh, being a, a, a bad conductor and a fairly good insulator. That's a dielectric. There is no other dielectric. There's no dielectric field. There's no dielectricity. It's the expression of loss inertia as evidenced by the conjugate geometry of force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Everything. Conjugate geometry of force and motion, uh, something in acceleration again. Just words. Absolutely no physical shape to the words at all. Nothing to visualize. It's capacitance, resistance, magnetic permeability, dielectric permittivity. And those two things, the dielectric permittivity, there's no such thing. Uh, the other one, we know the permittivity of space was never even measured, so it's just a nonsense constant uh, that was used for mathematical gimmickry. And everything in the universe obeys the fucking right-hand rule. That is... Uh, except the things that are gravitational because the right-hand rule is completely irrelevant because there's no polarization in gravity. Gravity is, by definition, magnetism without polarization. Wait for it. Why those vehicles are shaped like a torus. The fact that the center is not hollow doesn't mean anything. That would be where the crew cabin would be at. That is the reason. The only... So again, he's saying there's no gravity in the center or some kind of bullshit. I don't know what he's saying. Then you'd need an incredibly massive uh, flying saucer. It just doesn't, have any, doesn't make any sense. No sense at all. Logical reason by applying logic and platonic retroduction as to why these UFOs or these uh, non-Earth vehicles are saucer-shaped. That is the only logical explanation for it. It doesn't have any connection to any logical um, process. Logic is combining facts. Logic is um, ordering uh, things based on properties, similarities, uh, categorizing. That's what logic is. There's no evidence of applying any logic here. I can't connect any one of these words to any of the other words in any kind of order to make any of this make sense. It's point, source, Unmagnitude, uh, you know, counter space. I, I mean, it's all just rubbish. There is nothing, anything else would completely crucify Occam's razor, would crucify logic, would cru So, again, he says there's some kind of Occam's razor kind of simplicity in him bringing up the right hand rule in the context of a non polarized field. No, that's not being simple. Crucify retroduction and would crucify everything that I know about field theory, which is a shitload. Yeah, yeah, you don't know anything as you have demonstrated. You can't even, you don't even give the field any meaning or substance, any mechanism through which it fields. Field of what? Excuse my bad language there. Someone's going to send me an email. Like, I heard, my child heard you say that cuss word and I'm so angry. <laughs> I hope you like this video. This is a video on retroduction applied to... UFOs. You know, whatever that is, um, it's not logic applied. Uh, applying logic recognizes that humans have been for thousands of years compulsive liars <laughs> and uh, dupes and fools. And they're, um, they jump to conclusions way too soon 
Um, they act and behave hysterically. They see spiders or snakes and they do all kinds of things. They kill their own kids because they think they're the enemy. I mean, all kinds of stupid ass, weird ass bullshit they do. And UFOs are just part of that, s that negative psychology. If you like this video, click the link below or you can send me an email telling me how much you hate me. <laughs> Either way. Yeah, well, you're a fake, a fraud, a phony, a liar, uh, in the sense that you are a coward. Uh, you haven't won any debates. You never even had a debate in your life, uh, as far as I can tell. I haven't seen one anywhere. It's all good. Life is short and shitty. Seek wisdom. Pe yeah, right. Um, again, nice words, but that's this isn't wisdom. It, it, there's no facts, there's no evidence cited, there's no experiment cited, there's no nothing. There's just blow hard, blow hard. All right, that's all we get. Peace out, Girl Scout. Yeah, peace out, Girl Scout. Mm hmm. Cool. So, I'm sure the comments are just all a bunch of, oh, Ken, you're so special. Oh, I wish I could be so smarticated. And, you know, elucidated. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people are just nuts. Look at all this crap. Well, you know, it's not much. Um, I knew you would eventually be working on a UFO. Uh, or wait a minute, maybe you have been working on a UFO. Huh. Let's see what the reply is. It would be the logical conclusion to his book. Uh, I know it has me working on one. Just hopeless. Thank you for clearing up the Theora. A bunch of whatever, baby talk. Uh, cynicism. What was the metaphysical basis? Uh, I don't know. The whole thing seemed extra physical or non physical. Oh, look, a little witch or something. Me and a few friends were backpacking at Mountain Lake. 100% saw one hover over the peak for a minute or so and shoot off like a speeding bullet. We all saw it. It was toroidal. This is no hope. <laughs> no hope. I am pleasantly surprised at this topic. I have been fascinated by why these vehicles always seem to relatively have the same shape in comparison to one another. So you you're find it curious that uh, human beings would understand what friction was. And it, like bullets. They, you don't understand, I mean, <laughs> you, know, you don't understand why they point on a bullet they want to actually get where it's going you don't understand why they do that they went from having little round balls to having bullets oh shit ah draft science is his elk obviously thumbed this down oh yeah right sorry i don't do that uh naturally i thumbed it up in response so that it just tells you what kind of character you have the video is garbage. He doesn't say anything. There's no physics in it. So, there's no science. So, uh, again, you know, I, but look, he's got a little avatar with, you know, anime in it. You know, living in a dream world. Someone should experiment with toroidal copper coils to produce omnidirectional non-point field with yeah they, they keep trying to do things and no nobody ever succeeds because they don't understand the Newton principle I mean you, you you can't stop a force you can only you can only do exactly what Newton says you gotta hit it with an opposite force and it's gonna cost you energy to do that a lot of energy in the case of gravity Ah, oh, Jesus. Bob Lazar claimed to work at, on those crafts at Area 51 before he went public in the 80s. Yeah, lots of people make lots of claims because human beings, again, are horrible liars. He was there to work on the propulsion system, which he claimed was omnidirectional. Here we go again. What does that even mean? 
I, I mean, obviously, it'd be really cool if you could go any direction you want to go. Up, down, left, right, forward, back, in any, any direction. Of course, yeah, that'd be the cooler car to have. So what? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, you know. Yes, of course. Or field asymmetries. Oh, no, this is a different one. Um, you can look it up. The models he made of the craft fits the bill of what you're selling. So it's just hilarious. I, you know, I mean, they're just having a whole diluted little conversation like somebody's actually made something. Correlation doesn't equal causation, though. So he could be lying, or you could be lying, or both of you could be lying, or you could be, or they could be idiots. Delusional idiots is the easy answer. Oh, incoherent and mul multiplicative, omnidirectional, are the same thing. You know, that's why they're different words. Incoherent, this idiot is saying, is the same thing as multiplicative. Uh, just too stupid. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to read that. Um, what is your thoughts on... Kenny Dan 2.1 ancient book teachings and whatever some other crazy person um, Platon the flat earth philosopher I don't know what that means damn slinging bombs tonight nice I don't know what that means um, a with the little baby face Flux capacitor located in the center of the craft. Uh -huh. The right hand rule is exactly the way we would determine the point in space to program robot coordinates. So again, gravity has no polarization. Polarization, which causes the right hand rule. I mean, these people are just so clueless. I love the video. Thy wisdom. I mean, it's all this. People are just so fucking stupid. It's just, it's just so pitiful. I live on such a dumb, dumb planet. Pathetic organisms. I mean, again, they are belligerently stupid. I mean, they're not just stupid by some tragic, sad, <laughs> you know, occurrence. These people are belligerently stupid. They're hostile to a truth because the truth isn't the fairy story they want. Ugh. Disgusting. So anyway, uh, just very depressing. Uh, but well, I'll have to endeavor to persevere. <laughs>